As Moses was an instrument, Moses also became frustrated when the people did not catch the vision and manifest it in their own lives. Does Minister Farrakhan ever get frustrated? Yes. 10 years, 15 years later when... But I'm not tired. Mm. I'm hurting because I know what's coming. But what frustrates you? The fact that Elijah Muhammad said to me it's going to take more than teaching to straighten our people up. I'm a teacher. I'm like a mother. When a mother has way with children, and she's talking to them and talking to them and talking to them, and she even spanks them, but her spanking, you know, it don't, doesn't quite touch them in the right way to make them change. Then one day, out of frustration, she turns them over to daddy. <laughs> daddy ain't talking. Dad, when daddy starts whipping that backside, the child cries, I ain't gonna do it no more. He said, he knows. You're not going to do it no more, but I'm going to keep doing this until I make the message that your mother said to you sink deep in. In the 33rd chapter of Ezekiel, they saw the prophet Ezekiel as a beautiful song. And when they couldn't hear the song anymore, you know what they said? Indeed, the prophet of God was among us. How do you all see Farrakhan? You see him as a lovely song. I love to go hear the brother. The brother can rap. The brother's this. The brother's that. But I know there's an end to the final call. Mm -hmm. I know that when the train says, final call, leaving on track 22, well, final call, gate six. <laughs> if you don't get there in time, it leaves you. Well, right now, black people are in a dangerous position because the God is angry with us. Angry because we know better, but we refuse to do better. A warner came among us and told us, get up from the foot of the enemy and stop begging them for what you could unite and do for yourself. And you still out here looking to them to provide a future for you when the future is in your own hands. And then you turn on yourself and kill yourself and kill each other. No, the God is angry, and we're going to pay a price for that. My days of warning us about what God is about to do is just about over. Not that my time to lead is over. My time to warn you of what God is about to put on our behind is up. And you're about to reap the chastisement that you richly deserve because you know better and you won't do better, so you got to feel. That's what my mother told me. A hard head make a soft behind. Well, your behind, not you, but our people's behind is going to be like soft putty when God gets finished. And the very people that you diss God for is going to turn on you. And you'll be slaughtered in the streets of the ghetto. Mark my words, brother, because I'm not warning you much longer. I'm telling you what you're going to face. And America is in the soup as we speak. She's going down, brother. And if we hang on to a ship that's sinking, man, you go down with the ship. You got to change. We've got to change. There's no playing for us anymore. It's all over. Bush has led this country to its near complete destruction. And if he goes a step further and gets into greater war, war that you can't win, then I feel sorry for you who think that you can be all that you can never be by joining the armed forces. Well, let's pause. There are a couple things. Um, one is that I think I've heard you say, and I'm not quoting you, but paraphrasing, um, that white folks often give themselves over to evil and animalistic behavior um, connected to this white supremacy uh, that we find ourselves in the midst of. I'm wondering, in the midst of your journey uh, and all that you've seen, in believing that, um, how do you respond to the animalistic and evil behavior that we give ourselves over to? Any human being is capable of animalistic behavior because we start like animals. 
and we grow into humans. And if we're successful in our spiritual growth, we become reflections of the divine. What has happened to black people is a lack of justice. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to me that the star that is in the heavens that justify a worship of God, whenever justice is missing in our lives, the balance is lost. Mental balance is lost. And when a human being is deprived of justice and deprived of the proper courts or system for the redress of grievance, then the human being becomes not only savage, but beastly in our actions. The Bible says that the beast had put his mark in the forehead and in the hands of the people of God. And if you look at our community today, the mark of the beast is in our forehead. It's the way we think. Mm. The murder rate in the, in the inner cities of America and even in suburbs is horrendous. The things that we do to each other without even a thought of feeling sad over this. 10 year olds, 11 year olds squeezing a trigger, putting a cap in somebody and killing them and going into the burger counter and eating a burger after just slaughtering their brother. That's a beast in human form. That's a savage that has lost the knowledge of self and is living the life of a beast. We can't continue to blame the white man. We have to accept responsibility for our actions. And when knowledge is present, we hear it and act as though we didn't hear it and continue this downward spiraling in our conduct where we're doing things to each other today that never was done even during the darkest hours and days of slavery. There's a price we have to pay for this behavior. And as I've warned our people, as you see the Palestinians with their AK-47s, but the Israelis come in with helicopter gunships and they go into the West Bank and kick down the doors and kill who they wish to kill. That's going to happen in the inner cities of America. America is training her soldiers right now in Fort Hood, Texas and in other places to kick down doors in the inner city, to find the guns that are there, to find the AK-47s that are there, the little arsenals that we have that make us think we're powerful. And helicopter gunships come down on our community with those kind of powerful machine guns. Don't you think that what you see over there, you're not going to see it over here. You're going to know that the people that killed our fathers are present in their children. And there's some of them that have no mercy for us. Right now, in the police force, you have that Ku Klux Klan mentality existing. And so, Either we clean up our act, and we don't have a lot of time. Either the preachers get up in the pulpit and don't preach to the choir. Let's get out in the streets and get to our people. Let's sit down and talk with our rappers and help them to see that we can make a better people and we need their help. Don't condemn them, teach them. Don't condemn them, reform their thinking. We're in bad shape, my brother. But as a man soweth, the same shall he also reap. And that's why Jesus told Peter, sheathe your sword, because those who live by the sword will die by it. I'm fearful for our people's future. But I know we'll be all right. But after daddy gets finished whipping that backside.